How do you take care of yourself in Singapore? Well, we do the best we can. We follow the developments very closely. We do our best to help Thai workers in the various foreign workers' dormitories, and of course also the general Thai population here in Singapore. We work in very close partnership with the Singaporean government to, to make the best out of the situation. Mr. Ambassador, from the outside, things in Singapore look very bad, according to news report we have been reading. So how is it I mean, actually I mean, on the ground you are there? So how is it, what, what exactly is the situation there now? Well, well thank you very, very much for the question. I think mm. the, um, if you look at the figures, uh, it mm. can uh, uh, be uh, perhaps um, you know, a, a little bit amazement in that sense. Uh, you have a very high number of cases now in Singapore uh, just reported at noon today, uh, 799 new cases, and that amounts now to 14,423 total cases. So, in terms of the numbers, it may look a little bit um, uh, uh, can can struck you with some awe. But what is actually happening is that uh, we see so far uh, the cases are being uh, confined, or shall we say, uh, contained in. Uh, in the majority of, of the cases, which is the foreign workers dormitories. Uh, in that sense, uh, and if you look at it against the number of local cases in various parts of the community here in Singapore, they're actually much smaller, about 20 or so number of cases. So uh, that is the silver lining. Of course, uh, for the foreign workers in the dormitories, it's still a very anxious situation uh, because the vast majority of the infections are there. And certainly the Thai workers uh, feel anxious, their families here in Thailand feel anxious, and therefore the Royal Thai Embassy, we will monitor very closely, uh, work very closely with, in touch with the Thai community here in Singapore, with the Thai labor uh, in the dormitories, as well as uh, with the Singaporean government. So we will follow very closely uh, and, and see what best we can to supplement and complement the efforts that are being taken right now by the Singaporean government uh, to take care of the foreign workers here in Singapore, including the Thai workers. Do you have any idea how many of the Thai workers there may need help? Yes, uh, that is one of our top priorities. What we have done is, is we have established about two weeks ago a task force mm -hmm. here at the embassy comprising the Office of the Labor Attaché, our Defense Attaché and everyone else to combine working very closely with the Thai community and the representatives of Thai workers who were actually there in the dormitories. And we set up a network to try to follow and take a census of how many uh, workers are actually in the dormitories. Uh, right now, the figures that we have is around 4,000. We have about 4,000 uh, Thai workers in the 43 foreign workers dormitories uh, here in Singapore. But there are other places as well. There are other dormitories and sites which are uh, not under the the control of the, um, the the government agencies here in Singapore. They're run by the private companies. And of course, there are other labor here in Singapore as well. So uh, we try to follow them very closely and to give them as much support as we can. And how many of them are being treated in hospital, Ambassador? How many of Thai yes. migrant workers? Uh, we don't have the exact figure of, the, of how many Thais are migrant workers. Uh, but we do know that the as of yesterday, there are 82, 82 uh, Thai nationals um, comprising uh, can be, you know, uh, residents, can be um, uh, workers uh, that um, are now uh, classified as, as being an infected case and are receiving the necessary care in the various hospitals here in Singapore. Uh, and of course, I'd like to thank the Singaporean government for taking care of all Thai nationals who are uh, uh, affected by the COVID-19. Uh, what it works, how it works is that we will be informed of each particular case, uh, for example, the visa status that they have uh, of the Thai nationals, but we won't be informed of the exact identity. Uh, this is a private information issue, but what each case Thai national has received is the phone number of the hotline of the Thai embassy. So if each of the um, person affected by the COVID-19 wants to contact the Thai embassy, they can do so. As now, as of now, there are five Thai nationals that have already contacted the embassy and told us that they are well. And so, um, and we are following very closely. And, and if the remaining 50 plus um, or, or 60 plus um, Thai nationals wish to contact the embassy, they can. 
Um, out of these, we expect maybe 80% um, of the uh, the um, the uh, the number of Thai uh, laborers right now who are infected are probably Thai workers. So we're following the situation very closely. But, but have any of the Thais made known their wishes to come home? Or if they do, how, how do you handle the situation? Yes, um, there are uh, different Thai people have different views. For those of you, those of them who wish to come to Thailand, uh, we certainly will work closely with them and with the agencies in Bangkok. As you may know, uh, for the moment, the, uh, there is a ban on civilian commercial flights. Uh, passenger flights uh, entering Thai airspace, uh, and, and this has been extended uh, till the end of the month, uh, until the end of next month, in fact. And so we will have to work very closely if there are certain numbers of Thai people who wish to go back for various reasons, and we can understand that. We will try to make the arrangements what we call repatriation flights. Uh, now, we are still lucky because uh, there are still cargo flights uh, that are servicing Bangkok and Singapore. And so uh, it's not going to be difficult if we have a repatriation flight to secure passenger seats as well uh, in those uh, cargo flights. Uh, they also uh, serve passengers as well. So this is something that we try to coordinate. But, uh, but I, what I'd like to say and is that the overall situation uh, in Singapore, there's a sense of calmness. If you look at the, um, you know, in the streets and, and you, you follow the media, and the social media as well. There's a sense of calmness that they are tackling the situation. Uh, one statistic that I'd like to share is the number of deaths here in Singapore. Uh, now, there may be a large number of infections, 14,000 plus, but the number of deaths is, is 12, 12 deaths. So uh, what does that mean? That means that uh, they have been, the public health system here in Singapore has been able to service and to take care of those infected. If you look at it percentage-wise, uh, how compare the number of deaths here in Singapore to the number of infected, you have a ratio, a percentage of only 0.08% of those infected uh, die. So, which means that the vast majority uh, receive the necessary treatment in order to get better. So that is a good statistic that uh, we follow very closely. In terms of number, is has risen quite sharply last week, Ambassador. Can you just tell us what's the procedure of the testing and why so suddenly the number has increased very sharply, but today it has declined a bit? Yes, it's a, it's a very good question. I think for those of us who have been following developments in Singapore quite closely, uh, you can see that um, the first announcement uh, that there was a case of uh, foreign workers being infected from the dormitories was the 31st of March. That's when you had the original, uh, according to the reports, four uh, foreign workers uh, that had been infected. And that the number of foreign workers right now has, uh, you know, up until just a, a few days ago has, has, has uh, increased so much now uh, to around like um, uh, 10,525 uh, foreign workers. That's the data as of the 26th of April. Uh, the question is why? Well, uh, it it is uh, it seems as though since the area is is a a a a, a contained area uh, involving many dormitories, where perhaps there are more crowded conditions than in other places in Singapore, mm. uh, uh, the chances of infection are higher. Uh, but also part of the reason is that once it has been identified that the foreign workers' dormitories is a high risk area. It has led what we call, uh, what they say, I guess, in, in, in international parlance is the um, active, proactive testing. And therefore, and, and the reason behind that, as we understand it, is that uh, there is a conscious effort to separate um, sick workers from the healthy workers. Uh, because don't forget that foreign workers here in Singapore make up in total about um, 1.4 uh, million uh, foreign workers here in Singapore. Uh, that uh, makes up about 40% of the labor force here in Singapore. So if you're going to separate the sick from the healthy and therefore uh, protect the healthy and allow them to be able to uh, pursue the various uh, work in the various industries in order to keep the economy going, testing would be required. So that is one of the reasons why uh, the numbers have increased uh, very rapidly in the last uh, few weeks or so. Uh, you're right, Gunata, uh, that the numbers have gone down a little bit but I think we're all watching the developments very closely. The key thing 
is that uh, we are all uh, uh, hoping that the very active measures in place, you know, they are separating the foreign workers out into other areas in terms of uh, new housing accommodations, uh, you know, floating hotels are considered. Uh, areas under the uh, facilities under the uh, Singapore Armed Forces are also being used to separate, to reduce the density of the lab foreign laborers in the dormitories. And that uh, we hope that within um, in, 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 in the next couple of weeks or so will result in a decline in numbers. Uh, added to that, of course, is the care facilities that are available uh, in the foreign workers dormitories, in the community care centers and in the hospitals in order to take care of the various levels of, of uh, symptoms uh, that infected foreign labor may have. So, so we, this is how we're seeing the situation. So that's certainly one thing we can learn from Singapore. But Mr. Ambassador, as we know that Thailand, like very much like Singapore, has a large population of migrant workers. So are there any other lessons we can learn from Singapore so that we can better be, be better prepared in dealing with uh, possible I mean, uh, infection among the, uh, these workers in Thailand? Yes, I think the sharing of best practices and learning from one another's experiences is one of the strengths that we have within the region especially with the very close network of the ASEAN health uh, you know, uh, sectoral bodies, um, agencies that meet all the time. And therefore, these lessons learned are being, uh, are being uh, looked into very carefully. Of course, there are varying uh, experiences and, and differences. Uh, in Singapore, perhaps the, the migrant workers, the foreign workers are contained in, uh, in selected areas that we can identify, uh, whether it's the foreign workers dormitories or dormitories run by uh, private companies. Uh, we think in Thailand, perhaps the foreign workers will be more dispersed uh, in, in various uh, provinces or, or in the community. So the experiences may be a little different. But I think what is important is that uh, the, the situation here indicates that you have to be watchful uh, all the time as to where the outbreaks may occur. Uh, if in, in the analysis that my team has looked into in, in March, for example, we saw that in March, the priority here in Singapore was to look at the imported cases. You know, they were being very careful uh, about that. And they have resolved that. The imported cases is basically zero now. We had two uh, happening yesterday, but it has been zero for a number of weeks. Uh, the second issue is, of course, the economy, how we can, uh, how the Singapore government can ensure that the economy will continue, will recover. And, and the social safety nets that had to be given to both Singaporean workers and foreign workers, for example. Mm -hmm. And the third priority, I think, in around early to mid-March was the vulnerable groups, the, uh, the elderly, uh, how that could be taken care of. At that time, uh, in our analysis, we didn't see, or at least uh, we didn't think that there was indication uh, from the Singapore side that there was a problem in the foreign workers' dormitories. That came around the 31st of March, as we understand it. Mm -hmm. And then, as you can see, after that, the first cases were identified. You see a whole series of measures being put in place, including the, um, the announcement of the, the, um, the uh, circuit breakers on the 3rd of April, effective on the 6th, 7th of April, and, and increasing measures uh, to help contain and to address the situation in the foreign workers' dormitories. So that's how we see the situation. I see. So quick response was, the key, was key to dealing with the... the the situation then? Well, I think the key from at least the embassy's perspective, if the the thrust of the spiking cases are in the foreign workers dormitories, what is therefore important is to take care of them the best we can. And here mm -hmm. we appreciate very much the policy statements that have been coming up from the Prime Minister of Singapore and other cabinet ministers that will, essentially the message is that the foreign workers, including Thai workers, will be taken care of. And we see that in the uh, medical care that's being provided. Mm -hmm. uh, three meals a day are being provided to, to all foreign workers in the dormitories. Um, and in fact, uh, what we've been trying to do the MC is to supplement those efforts by uh, providing what we call care packages with Thai food or, or dry mm -hmm. food, whether it's uh, glutinous rice or cow nail, as we all know, and others. We've been uh, about uh, the last two weeks have been trying to rush these into the, um, the dormitories, of course, in coordination with the Ministry of Manpower because there are important access and health issues that we have to coordinate very closely. 
Uh, but for example, uh, what can be done, the, the, so the physical care is being given. It is important to give the psychological support. And one way, for example, uh, this is one of the suggestions we've made is, can we have um, some of the food that is being given to the foreign workers? Can we have on some days, perhaps Thai food uh, that will be helpful uh, for the, the Thai workers uh, community in the foreign workers dormitories. So uh, the, the key is to contain what's happening in the foreign workers dormitories to bring the cases down through active testing first, separate uh, the sick from the healthy, uh, protect the healthy, and then make sure that the sick are taken care of. And here we are, uh, we are, you know, uh, take heart from the fact that the number of deaths is very low, 12 deaths uh, for a country with an infection of over 14,000, which is, a, as I said, a 0.08%, which is a very a good ratio, if you want to call it that. So we, we are keeping a watchful eye, but we are uh, having some hope, uh, and we look forward to supplementing and complementing the efforts of the Singaporean government uh, from the embassy's perspective uh, to help the Thai workers and, of course, the Thai community here in Singapore. Ambassador, it was a successful measure of Singapore in about February, but then it turned out that the number of cases has increased and then lowering right now. What's the sentiment among Singapore and what's the measure or what's the policy of the government to cope with all the crisis of the pandemic, quite large scale of infection? nowadays well as as the mc is we as my task force is observing uh, in talking to a cross sector of people here in singapore uh, there is a sense of as a calm all right there's a sense of calm here within singapore that the situation is being addressed and there is a, a good uh, communication between the government and the people of singapore as well as the various sectors of society whether it's the private sector or civil society organization, it's a not only a whole of government effort, it's a, it's a whole of nation effort to address the issue. There's been a lot of uh, giving of information. I think that is key. And therefore, uh, this we are witnessing that people are continuing their lives and they are following the strict measures. And I say they're very strict measures which are enforced under the circuit breaker uh, uh, measures in place. And so these are things uh, that the sentiments are, are, are in the sense that there is a belief that the situation will be resolved. And of course, uh, we are supporting that because it will benefit, of course, Thai workers uh, in the dormitories, as well as the Thai residents and citizens here uh, in the various communities here in Singapore as well. So things are calm uh, and there are active reviews of all the situation all the time. New measures are being put in place. And let me just put one emphasis on the economic measures. I think it's what's very important is that you see here in Singapore over the past uh, two or three months, uh, four um, financial economic packages that are out, total of 63.7 billion Singapore dollars in Thai baht. That's 1.5 uh, trillion Thai baht. Uh, what is important is that, is that these measures are, are designed to help provide social safety nets, as well as to support SMEs as well as to the larger companies. And the foreign workers benefit from this. How? Because of the various measures, there are guarantees in place for foreign workers to receive their wages. So this is at least one less concern that uh, since they have been asked to isolate themselves uh, up until the 4th of May, at least they will get their wages because the measures are in place uh, for the various companies or in the government to pay the wages of the foreign workers. So these are the things uh, that I think that are being done right now in order to contain the situation in the foreign workers dormitories, to bring the numbers down and eventually to address it. Mr. Ambassador, how is life for you and your ASEAN colleagues under lockdown, which will last another four weeks? Uh, yes, well, uh, we are, uh, the Royal Embassy is uh, open at least all work days, uh, both the the diplomat section and the consular section, we have to be open. Why? Because uh, there are calls for assistance from the Thai community. Uh, we have to prepare care packages to the foreign, uh, to the Thai workers. Uh, this is in working very closely with the uh, Thai community here in Singapore, and I, I appreciate and, and commend the great work that they have done. Um, and so we are open all the time. I think a number of um, ASEAN embassies are already uh, fully uh, working only online, and that is they're all working from home. Um, but so, but we make the best of the situation. We keep a positive attitude. We keep in touch with our Thai community friends uh, here in Singapore, including those in the um, labor dormitories. And we 
look for, we always look for the, uh, the, the what we call the rainbow uh, that is not too far away, uh, that we will resolve the situation and everything will go back to normalcy. But in the meantime, we are on standby uh, 24 hours a day uh, to assist the Thai community here in Singapore and especially the Thai workers right now.